So hi everyone. Uh, so as Tom announced, I'm Alexander Kovacev. I used to work as a teaching and research assistant at the Faculty of Computer Science and Engineering in Skopje, North Macedonia, before moving to Berlin, Germany, where I currently work as a senior data scientist at Delivery Hero SC. So I sort of stayed in the food business, but. Uh, another aspect. And um, today I'm going to present a work that was done uh, at my time at the university. And I will show you how we can use linked data uh, towards a um, personalized diet. So the mot uh, motivation behind uh, this talk is a little bit also personal, uh, having some uh, food disorders and intolerances myself, I was always wondering how I can use uh, food or how I can use food data in order to uh, understand which foods I should consume or avoid in order to improve my health and well-being and fight these uh, intolerances and uh, 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 symptoms. So I truly believe by the statement that we all hear is that we are what we eat. And also Tom mentioned this statement uh, when presenting this track. So we need to take care of our uh, food in order to, uh, what we eat in order to take care of our body and health. And even the father of the medicine, Hippocrates, said, let food be the medicine and medicine be the food. So I will talk a little bit briefly about how the idea of this uh, analysis and research was born. At the university, we had this, uh, this bi-weekly meetings with other PhD students and other groups and discuss about interesting papers or what we are working on, what problems do we face and how we can uh, connect uh, our knowledge and uh, solve these problems. So uh, a friend of mine and colleague of mine, Milos, he was working at the, uh, with the Linked Open Data, which is a project founded by the Teams Berlin in uh, 2006, the father of the World Wide Web. Uh, he uh, advises uh, and gave a set of principles and best practices how to publish uh, structured data on the web. And... Um, the idea is that uh, data is uh, not only made available and free for everyone, but or also is interlinked in between. So uh, anyone can find and um, uh, gain more uh, information about the data. So uh, the four principles of the linked data state that the data should be published using uniform resource identifiers or URI. URS, and um, uh, this URS should be used uh, to name the things. HTTP uh, should be used to enable connection and lookup uh, um, of the things and uh, uh, of the data and resource description framework um, should be used or RDI, uh, air the F should be used uh, to describe the things. But the least but not uh, less, uh, the um, data should uh, contains URS to other data, so it should be linked. Also additional to, additional to these four principles is the so-called so rating of the data. Is your data five star? So one star data would be data available on the web. Um, three star data will be uh, data available, for example, in C uh, CSV format. And in the end, five star data will be the link RDF data. So uh, this is how the so-called open link data cloud looks as, as of 2019. There is uh, one uh, around 1,200 data set with around 16,000 links between these data sets, which is very valuable information. And uh, here, this really big cluster that we see of data is um, the uh, healthcare and a life sciences cluster, which is published by the Semantic Web Healthcare and Life Sciences Interested Group, and it contains around 68 million uh, interconnected um, RDFs, um, triples. Inside this life sciences cluster, we have, for example, this pearl, purple one is also very big group, the bio to RDF mm, data set, but also the drag bank data set, which my colleague was working on. And he was including uh, more information, how to uh, interlink the uh, drugs um, in between, and also for the Macedonian pharmacy. And in the same meeting, I was presenting a very interesting paper. I was working in the complex networks uh, area, and I stumbled upon a, a paper about the flavor network, flavor network and the principles of food pairing, which I found it extremely interesting. The authors um, basically crawled uh, web, uh, online recipes and um, 
they transformed this, uh, this information about the recipes and world cuisines and included additionally the uh, chemical compounds about the flavors of the ingredients from these recipes. And they did this beautiful flavor map of the recipes and also analyzed uh, the different flavors of the world cuisines. So I was, having, uh, I was working on a side project, personal project, uh, I was doing the same analysis for the Macedonian cuisines, like I crawled Macedonian uh, websites from recipes and analyzed the data. But I was thinking like, how uh, important is this uh, information, like having uh, online recipes and all the ingredients from the recipe and also like nutrition and service size. But what was also very important that there was information about the chemical compounds and so on. So in this meeting, uh, we asked so many questions from starting like, what recipes or cuisines uh, one should avoid if it's uh, using some medical drugs? Which cuisines should be preferred when a particular disease is present? Uh, can we find, uh, for example, a drug with, uh, to be changed uh, with another one which has less food, uh, negative food drug interactions? And we went into so further that um, professors were asking like, what food should I eat to stop hair loss or hair discoloring? Even like how we can increase longevity and delay aging using food. So just um, to start with, we said, okay, let's answer the most easy questions, what data we have. Uh, that is most easy to mine and to um, analyze. So um, we focused on the two aspects, the first negative interactions between drugs from a given category and recipes from a, a given cuisine. And the second aspect, ingredients impact on the negative food drug interactions in different parts of the world. Um, there is a link to the paper or, or the title of the paper that we published. So why is this important? Why should we care? So let me ask you here today, uh, do you, or how often do you read the guide when you are prescribed with a particular medication? Do you know if you should avoid alcohol or milk or grapefruit while taking these drugs? Also, what about children medication? This is also very important. Have your pediatrician given you this information? And uh, what if you take more than one drug and these drugs are from different categories? Do you know uh, or do you are aware of the combinations of food you should, you should avoid? So why is this important? Here are some striking numbers. Like 70% of the American population consumes at least one prescription drug. 20% of those people take five or more drugs. And 1.5 million people are harmed by medications, including errors due to the lack of information provided or not reading the patient drug information. This is on, the, on one hand for the drugs and on the other hand for the food. Um, it is evident that food can change the bioavailability of a drug and modify its clinical effect. And we have this information at hand. And what is currently due to the travel and the uh, global um, cultural exchange, we are consuming non-native cuisines on, on daily basis. So we are not uh, eating the food from the region where we live, but we are eating world cuisines every day. So how was the analysis performed? In order to uh, combine these two data sets and to answer the questions we asked, we need to transform this data into a format that is um, uh, uh, easy to analyze, which would be the linked data format. On one hand, we had the, uh, the drug data, and on the other hand, we had the recipe data from the paper. Uh, the drugs data set uh, originates from the drug bank database, which is converted to linked open data format. So ba basically the drug bank database would be two star data transformed into drug bank data set uh, in five star format by the University of Mannheim. And uh, here, uh, this drug uh, bank data set con uh, contains around 4,700 drugs. Uh, for these uh, drugs, there are 968 food drug interactions, which originate from only uh, 525 unique drugs. We look only into the negative drug um, ingredient uh, interactions, which means like if there is avoid alcohol, this would be a negative drug uh, uh, food uh, interaction. If it's take without regards of food, which will be neutral, but and also it can be positive, uh, for example, increased consumption of magnesium. But uh, 
just to emphasize, we look into the neg only into the negative food drug interactions. We obtained local copy of the, of the data set uh, and we did sentiment analysis of the food drug interactions in semi-automated fashion uh, in, uh, in order to annotate these interactions. Then for each drug from the data set, we analyze the negative food interaction, detect the ingredients mentioned for this negative interaction, and locate, locate these ingredients in the recipe's data set. Basically, so uh, we uh, link each drug which uh, recipe pair based on the negative uh, drug uh, in ingredient interaction. Uh, and this is where uh, uh, the link is uh, saved, so in the drug's data set. On the other hand, we have the recipes data set. Uh, as I said, we use the recipes data set from the uh, Flavor Network uh, paper, where the authors uh, converted the data from one star data, which would be data available on the web, to three star data, which would be data available on a non proprietary format, which is CSV file. Uh, they uh, uh, cr um, extract information uh, about 60,000 recipes from t three different websites, and that would be epicurious.com, allrecipes.com, and menupan.com. Uh, um, the, the division of the recipes is uh, to 11 world cuisines, 11 different world cuisines. Uh, in order to uh, enable interoperability between the data set, we transform the, uh, the recipes data set from three star data to five star data using the food ontology. Um, and this allows to, uh, to annotate the uh, main uh, parts of the uh, uh, recipes data set, which will be cuisine on uh, ingredients and uh, the, uh, uh, then link it with the uh, drug data set. We do not extend the, as I said, the data set further. We just uh, have this um, information that we uh, want to use. The data sets both are published uh, on the uh, Virtuoso Universal self Server on the uh, our uh, the university, and the, there is a Sparkle endpoint that enables a querying of this data set and answering sort of questions as we have here. Um, and um, to analyze the data, we have like this very small equation to calculate the ratio of the interactions. Uh, we use the measurement of permits in order to uh, emphasize the number of patients out of 1,000 patients treated with a drug from a particular category that, uh, which can have negative food interaction when consume uh, food from given world cuisine. To uh, so AI is the number of existing interactions in the data set. As I said, it's, uh, um, we count the negative food interactions a drug can, uh, can have with a given category with the recipes from a given cuisine. And a PI is the number of possible interactions between number of drugs in one category and the number of recipes in a cuisine. And it's calculated as a multiplication between the number of drugs in one category and the total number of recipes in one cuisine. So uh, just to illustrate how do, uh, how do we cal calculate the, uh, the ratio, for example, we will have a look into the drug oxazepam and the um, uh, recipe number 9966. So um, oxazepam is a drug uh, used, for, um, uh, used uh, for the nervous system, which um, treats uh, an anxiety disorders, alcohol withdrawal, and insomnia. And it has a proven, uh, three clinically proven food drug interactions. It, and with avoid alcohol, uh, avoid excessive quantities of caffeine, which include coffee and tea, and also take with food. And since they take with food is sort of like a positive interaction, we don't include this interaction in our analysis. We just uh, uh, analyze the negative interactions with alcohol, coffee, caffeine, and tea. On the other hand, uh, as example, we have the recipe for kumquat cardamom tea bread, which uh, contains around, uh, I think, 13 ingredients like cardamom, vanilla, vegetable oil, egg, uh, butter, and so on, but also tea. Uh, this uh, tea is an um, ingredient uh, that is present in 102 distinct recipes in eight uh, different cuisines. The particular example is for the North American cuisine. And we connect these two uh, information. So uh, the connection is the ingredient T for the drug oxazepam, which is part of the drug category 
N and then the Kam uh, Kam Kam Kar cardamom tea bread with this part of the North uh, American cuisine. And we count this as an, one interaction. Even in the case, if this, in this recipe we had another uh, ingredient like alcohol or coffee, we will still count in one uh, interaction because we count the number uh, of um, interactions between drug and cuisine and not uh, ingredient level. So uh, I will show you now the results from the first aspect of the analysis, which would be the negative interactions between drugs from a given category and recipes from a given cuisine. Uh, I will just uh, list it here. So there is a very specific um, a system of categorizing drugs, which classifies the active ingredient of a drug according to the organ or the system they are act and their properties. There are 14 different uh, categories, like for example, A is for elementary tract and metabolism, which will be digestive tract, B is for blood and blood forming organs, J will be for anti-infectives for systematic use, which would be antibiotics, for example, and as I said, for nervous system and so on, I will leave it in the following slides as a reference. So uh, we discovered three different interesting patterns of food drug interactions, and two of them are quite interesting and sig uh, significant. For example, here we can see the pattern of interconnection between the South Asian, Southeast Asian, uh, East Asian, Latin American, and African cuisines with drug from categories B, which would be blood and blood forming organs, C, which would be cardiovascular systems, and for the nervous systems, and V for the various. And in, under various drugs, uh, there are drugs for like allergens, diagnostic agents, general nutrition, and also like surgical dressings and so on. So the reason behind this pattern uh, of influence is the fact that the drugs from these categories actually have negative food drug in, uh, interactions with um, garlic and ginger. And garlic and ginger are highly present in the cuisines from, this, from the following world cuisines like uh, Southeast Asian, East Asian, Latin America, and so on. And uh, additionally to this uh, pattern adds up the um, food uh, drug interactions between the drugs from the categories and uh, grapefruit, avocado, and licorice. Uh, also, co uh, coffee is found in the interactions between these drugs, but uh, coffee adds up in the overall world cuisine, so it's not very significant to this pattern. So in this... Uh, Picture. So we have here a world map that depicts the intensity of negative cuisine drug interactions for drugs from category B, which would be blood drugs um, in per meals. So um, one out of uh, so out of 1,000 patients that can have um, uh, uh, negative interactions uh, with uh, when being administered with drugs from uh, category B. And uh, the white spots on the world map are uh, cuisines with, where we don't have any recipes from or were not uh, classified in uh, any of these cuisines. Uh, since category B uh, belongs to the, uh, the, the pattern we saw before, uh, it is the same negative food drug interaction intensity that we see. So the, um, we have significantly more uh, negative interactions with cuisines from Latin America, Africa, and uh, Southeast Asia, and so on. And um, the second pattern is completely different. So also different drug categories and also different world cuisines. And um, we hear, we see um, negative inter interactions between cuisines from Eastern European, Northern European, Western European, and North American cuisines with uh, drug categories from uh, drug category A, D, G, J, L, and S. And um, this pattern is a result mainly of the use of or presence of milk as an ingredient in the recipes from these world cuisines. And uh, in this map, we see the, f um, the intensity of negative food uh, drug interactions for drugs from category J, which will be main antibiotics. And uh, uh, as also in the same, uh, in the previous pattern as we saw, this uh, intensity is very high in the Northern American uh, and uh, West European and uh, North European and Eastern European cuisines. And uh, now I would uh, like to continue with the results on the ingredients. We, we 
talked a, lot, a little bit about ingredients, why this is the case. So we mentioned milk, garlic, um, and uh, ginger, and so on. So let's see which are the ingredients and how is their impact of negative food drug interactions in different parts of the world. So we analyzed the, the uh, number or the percentage of negative food drug interactions in which one ingredient contributes and is responsible to the negative interactions. Uh, the percentage is calculated uh, over the total number of negative food drug interactions that we found in the data set, which is around 300,000 interactions. And the table clearly shows uh, that milk and garlic are the most uh, common in, uh, in, uh, so responsible ingredients for these uh, negative drug interactions, which where milk is being responsible for over 56% of the negative food drug interactions and garlic about 22%. And what is uh, interesting to or to emphasize that the, these two ingredients have different uh, effects on the cuisine drug interaction. So they have effect on different uh, categories, drug categories, but also on different world cuisines. So milk is the problem in the Western world and garlic is the prob uh, problem in Southern Europe, Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And we can see this from the table where we analyze the top three interacting ingredients per cuisine. So uh, we can see that um, milk is in the top first uh, ingredient, but also uh, garlic comes into North American, Western European, and Eastern European cuisines. And uh, garlic is the mostly highly responsible for the negative food drug interactions in the sort of rest of the world, Southern European, Middle East, um, Asia, Africa, and Latin, Latin America. So here in this world map, we see the global impact of milk in percentage. And milk has been proven that uh, has a negative effect generally on antibiotics. And uh, it can change the bioavailability, even prevents the absor absorption of uh, some of these drugs. This corresponds with the results that we, uh, which we found. And um, the reasons of the high occurrence of milk in negative food drug interactions in this part of the world is uh, basically due to the daily or high use of milk and dairy products in the uh, general, in this part of the world and in the recipes and the foods the, the people consume. And also this uh, may be linked to the high lactose tolerance that is uh, said that people, people from the Northern Europe Europe have, and that's why they consume much more milk and dairy products every day. And on the other hand, the regions as Southeast Asia, um, Asia, uh, South Africa are known regions that have lower level of lactose tolerance, and that's why they don't consume as much as milk as the Western countries. And uh, that's why we don't see um, that much uh, the impact of milk in negative food drug interactions in this part of the world. So this uh, world map um, depicts uh, the global impact of garlic in percentage, and uh, we have the, the reverse map here where we see that the garlic is responsible from, for the negative food drug interactions in um, the other parts sort of of the world, and um, largely in South, East, uh, South Europe, in Middle East, Asia, Latin America, and Africa, and uh, its impact is evident in the rest of the world, but not, not that as high. Uh, the pat uh, why garlic uh, has this uh, pattern is, come, I think, comes from uh, uses, uh, has a, some cultural and historical background because it was really used in ancient Rome, in Egypt, uh, Greece, China, and India uh, for prevention and treatment of the diseases, also for providing strength and even for an enhancing performance of Olympic athletes. So I, uh, here I provide several useful links where you can access the, get the data that uh, we perform the research. So we have the drug data set, the recipes data set, also open um, endpoint for uh, searching, with Sparkle endpoint for searching and querying this data on the Faculty of Computer Science and engineering, and also there is a nice visualization tool where you can play with this map and basically um, uh, see the influence of other uh, for other um, drugs uh, categories for uh, all the ingredients and so on. And you can have a um, view of the map for different drugs categories and ingredients. So 
I hear shortly talked about in the pre uh, preceding slides how by transforming two different data sets and linking them using the linked open data uh, principles, we were able to extract knowledge about the cuisines, uh, drug interactions, and uh, see the impact of different ingredients on these negative interactions. Uh, and having this information in hand, we were able to stress out the importance of professional guidance when one patient uh, is prescribed with a new medical drug and um, uh, when, uh, and he should be uh, given uh, information about which foods and which cuisines he should avoid or even uh, be excluded from its diet. But I would like not to stop there and motivate you to look more and look further and see what else we can discover using the linked data. And uh, what was for me really important when we started working on this project that, back then is that uh, having food data or online less recipes on one hand, so we have uh, the recipes, we have the cuisines, we have the ingredients, the serving size, the nutrition, and also we, can, we are able to find the chemical information the, uh, about these ingredients for the food. And on the other hand, we have the health data or we looked into the bio to RDF project where we have information about diseases, drugs, genomic information, chemical information, even, even much more. We, are, uh, we need to find a way how to link this data, how to extract information and answer all the questions we have related to food and health. So what we tried a little bit, just a very short, uh, like maybe one, two weeks effort, because this was our side project, it was not related to our PhD thesis, is um, we tried to uh, connect to answer the last question, like how to uh, increase longevity and delay aging using food. So we have, um, on one hand, we had the recipes data, which contained the ingredients and the chemical compounds of the ingredients from the flavor network. And on the other hand, we have GeneH, which is a, a link open data database for genes related to aging and longevity. So uh, in between, there is this CAC database, which is Kyoto uh, Encyclopedia of Genes and Genomes, and contains information, so it's linked with the GeneH database for, um, for the identification of the genes. And inside, for each gene, you can find information about the proteins, uh, the chemical compounds, the drugs that uh, affect these genes and so on. And we tried to connect this uh, with the food data, but I will say we didn't, uh, we find our allowed maybe 100 links, but we didn't never continue with the uh, analysis of this data, unfortunately. And that's why I would like to motivate you and I would like to see an app <laughs> Uh, as Marcel uh, presented, where I would be able to input my uh, medical conditions or my, um, if I take some prescription drug, if I have some preferences about nutrition, about health goals, and based uh, on using machine learning and AI, um, this app would be able to like remind me, push, send me notification, give me recipes recommendation in order to improve my health and well-being. And I know this is possible, but we need just to put a little bit more effort towards uh, this goal. And last but not the least, so I would like to conclude this presentation uh, citing Clay Hembley, who said, data is the new oil, but it's only useful when it's refined. And yes, I, I believe in the statement and I say that data is the most valuable resource that we have now, but it's only valuable when it's well structured, defined, linked and analyzed. Linked data is able to expose, share and connect pieces of data, information and knowledge from the web. Having the right data at hand, we are able to gain insight, answer lots of questions, and contribute to improving uh, the human health and well-being. So, thank you, everyone. And questions. <laughs>